So Washington Post political reporter Amber Phillips joins me now to talk a little bit about what's going on today. Let's talk about the Electoral College, uh, Amber. You know that there's voting taking place across the country, but I'm wondering just how significant is this going to be, especially when you consider there's a possibility we will be seeing some faithless electors voting as well? Yeah, yeah, the Electoral College is normally a process every four years that doesn't grab headlines like this because <laughs> they tend to reflexively vote for the way we as a nation voted for president. But um, of course, there is kind of a grassroots um, grassroots urging among Democrats who don't want Donald Trump to be president to convince some of these electors to vote not for Donald Trump, basically. They need about 47 um, to basically rob Donald Trump of the presidency. Um, now, our founding fathers had this very debate. Alexander Hamilton said, hey, I think the Electoral College should be a check on the people. They should be allowed to vote however they want in good conscience. That is not the way we've seen this happen. Um, the most electors we've ever seen be faithless uh, is six, a total of six in a presidential election way back in 1808. Again, uh, supporters of Hillary Clinton, or rather opponents of Donald Trump, need some 47 to make this happen. Even if that did happen, it would go, uh, the, our Constitution says the rules would kick it over to the House of Representatives to decide who's president. And guess what? Republicans control Congress. Right, there you go. So chances are things will unfold as they have been for many, many uh, elections before this. Still, feeding into sort of this controversy, this drama, is this business about Russia hacking uh, Democratic officials in order to help Donald Trump win the election. And, you know, the FBI says they believe that's what happened. Uh, the CIA says they believe that's, that's what's happened. Donald Trump's transition team, though, has been really pushing back, and they are demanding evidence. First, they wanted to see a consensus within the intelligence community that seems to be happening. Now they want to see the evidence. But why do you think they're, they're doubting these findings? Sure. Um, so for one, it does look kind of weird, right, if you're the president-elect and, and you're questioning your own intelligence community's findings. But there are political <laughs> reasons for this. Um, Donald Trump spent the entire campaign saying he wanted to play nice with Russia and its president, Vladimir Putin, not convince or convict him of or accuse him of cyber warfare before he even becomes president. Uh, but I think the real thing that is uh, motivating Trump and his team Team to push back against the FBI and CIA's assessment is that Donald Trump's very victory risks being called into question here. Nobody in the intelligence community is saying that outright, but the lines are there to be drawn, and you could argue people would draw them. Donald Trump won three critical states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, by less than a percentage point each. Um, and you have Hillary Clinton in, in private conversations with donors that the New York Times aired last week saying, you know, she thinks Russia did cost her the election. So he has every reason politically to sort of push back against this notion that Russia helped him win. Mm -hmm. and, and sort of backing uh, the findings of the intelligence community, at least to a certain degree, are lawmakers from both parties, high-profile yep. senators, who are demanding a special investigation. They want to know, you know, did this happen? Will it happen again? And are any other countries doing this at all? And it's sort of pitting them against the president-elect already before he's even become the president. Yeah, I think this is going to be a major point of conflict in the Republican Party between the White House and Capitol Hill going forward. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, okay, we're talking about it. Lawmakers are definitely concerned. But what about just the regular people out there, the voters? Um, listen to this. We've got, according to a bipartisan poll uh, by Fox News, six in ten Americans say that Russia's involvement did not help Donald Trump win at all. So... Do the does you know the average voter really even care about this? It looks like no. Mm -hmm. um, if you dig down into the numbers in those polls, it of course divides along partisan lines. Who would have thought? Uh, but even Democrats aren't overwhelmingly, according to that poll, in the camp that Donald Trump uh, won because of Russia. And that suggests at this point, it's just really hardcore partisans. People like Hillary Clinton and her top campaign manager, who was out there trying to convince faithless electors um, to vote against Donald Trump 
are the ones that are that um, think Russia influenced this election. And the average American, uh, whether or not they voted for Donald Trump, doesn't seem to be too concerned about it. Yeah, I wonder, even if uh, we were to see all the evidence available uh, to us, you know, people tend to believe what they want to believe. It's certainly we've seen that during this election cycle. Uh, Amber Phillips, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.